اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی ویلکم یو آل آل دی پارٹیسپینٹ اسپیشلی دی ریسورس پرسن آنریبل پروفیسر ڈاکٹر اقبال چودھری ان اور فور ڈیز ہینڈ آن ورک شاپ آن انوائرمنٹ ماڈلنگ بیسڈ ریکوائرمنٹ انجینئرنگ تو وی ول پروسیڈ تھرو دی ریسائٹیشن اف دی ہولی قران آئی ریکویسٹ Osama Ima Siddiqui to recite a few verses from the Holy Quran. Assalamualaikum. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطي ربك فكر الله ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى وَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ جزاك الله This workshop uh, is organized by Comstech, the Ministerial Standing Committee on Scientific and Technological Cooperation of the OIC, <laughs> with collaboration with the IEEE Educational Activities of Karachi Section. So on behalf of the Comstech and IEEE Karachi Section, I welcome all the participants and the resource person Professor Zi Jin from Peking University, China. She is a professor in software engineering at Peking University, China. Her work is concerned with requirement engineering and knowledge-based software engineering. She is a co-author of four books and author of over 150 journal conference publications. She served for IEEE RE 2016 as General Chair, IEEE Congress of Services as PC Co-Chair, and in frequently serve for ICSE, FSE, etc. As for Program Committee Member, she is Executive Editor-in-Chief of Chinese General Software since 2013, Associate Editor of IEEE TSE from 2018, Associate Editor of IEEE TR from 2019 and served in the editorial board of JCST and REAG and ESPM and lots of other uh, contribution of Professor Zizin. She is accompanied with uh, her assistant, uh, Professor Zhang Chen. So uh, we welcome you both. So uh, now I introduce uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Chaudhary. He is right now Coordinator General Constec. Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary is a Distinguished National Meritorious and Director at ICC BS HEJ Research Institute of Chemistry and Dr. Panwani Center of Molecular Medicine and Drug Research. He is among the most prominent scientists of Pakistan, recognized for his original contribution in the field of natural products and bioorganic chemistry. He has written and edited 68 books, most of which have been published in USA and Europe. He is also the author of over 1,018 research papers and chapters in top international science journal of the West, as well as 51 US patents. The cumulative impact factor of his publication is over 2,000. This is by far the largest number of quality publications from many scientists in Pakistan. 
He has been among the most cited scientists of Pakistan in last five years with citation exceeding 23,000. So his H index is 62. He is a volume editor of many international book series and journals. He has served as a visiting faculty in many prestigious universities of the world. We have a very long list of uh, Sir Accomplishment and uh, his major achievements and award and honor. So actually, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary is a pride of uh, our country, our nation, and uh, we love Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary. So uh, now I welcome uh, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary sir. And I request Professor Dr. Iqbal to Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, good morning uh, and good afternoon, uh, our colleagues in China. Uh, we have a very distinguished speaker today, Professor Dr. Zi Chen from a very prestigious university, Peking University in China, along with uh, another Greek, Professor Xiao Hong Chen, two distinguished speakers from our very friendly country, China. Iron Brothers. And uh, on behalf of Comstech, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Hazima Mozum, and University of Karachi, Professor Dr. Sadiq, and Professor Dr. Hina Siniki, I'd like to welcome uh, both distinguished speakers to this uh, yet another very important seminar of uh, Comstech along with the University of Karachi. And uh, some other colleagues, I'm sure that many more would join us uh, this morning and benefit from this excellent presentation and workshop. We uh, concluded another very important workshop yesterday, and that was in the field of biological sciences. Over 400 registered participants for three days constantly indulged in learning how to uh, carry out high-quality PCR-based viral diagnosis from 30 odd countries. So this is a series of events which uh, Comstack, which is an OIC organization, is conducting regularly, in which we have uh, uh, speakers from all over the world, and today we have speakers uh, from China. Now, uh, my own understanding and knowledge of this field is very, very limited, largely what Dr. Sadiq had told me. Uh, but the fact is that I do understand the importance of uh, these events. Uh, I uh, have read a very important report of McKenzie, uh, The Next Big Things. And in that report in 1919, they predicted that uh, there are going to be 12 disruptive, disruptive technologies which will carry forward a major global transformation and generate uh, trillions of dollars. So, uh, one of the most important uh, technologies they have identified was uh, AI and, uh, and, and mobile telephony and software engineering, IoTs, and all related to what you would be discussing today because that is the holistic approach of managing, uh, managing huge uh, systems uh, which can be used for a variety of different purposes. Uh, so I really feel that these technologies are extremely important because of a very simple fact that, uh, you know, for countries like ours, developing countries like ours, Pakistan and many LDC, OIC countries, investment in huge infrastructure is very difficult. And uh, as a result, there is a growing problem of uh, unemployment and non-productivity. But if we can move into technologies like what you would discuss today, which requires uh, very little uh, investment, but uh, based on innovation and creativity of young people, understanding of, uh, uh, of the subject, then we can leap forward. You know, we can catch up with the developing world by uh, unleashing the creative potential of young people. And that, uh, is the critical message of today. We have to rely on our people and we have to make sure that we invest in their training, in their learning, and we 
we need to make sure that we provide them opportunities of uh, applying those knowledge which they have acquired. On behalf of Comsec uh, and uh, my colleagues, I would like to welcome both the resource persons of today and participants who are attending it from different uh, countries. I'm pretty confident that this uh, workshop would add up into their uh, knowledge base and also help in developing linkages both with resource person and with each other. With this, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Sadiq for organizing a series of events and this is one of uh, uh, many and I'm sure that you would continue to do it in collaboration of Hazima Malsam of Comsec and Hina Siddiqui of uh, ICCBS and that this whole process of learning would continue. With this, I'd like to thank all of you and uh, I would request you to kindly proceed with your program as planned. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary. Now I request uh, Professor Zijin, uh, now mic is to you, to start the uh, workshop. If you, want, okay. if you want to say something, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And before the workshop, I would like to thank, thank uh, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank University of uh, Professor from University of Karachi to invite me uh, to deliver this kind of uh, this special uh, workshop. And this is my first time to do the uh, to, to teach in, to uh, do the lecture online. So and uh, if, if I have uh, something uh, that uh, not uh, well and just uh, <laughs> just forgive me <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, after, after workshop you can write an email to me and uh, to uh, discuss with me more de uh, more details about the, the topics if I have something uh, have not uh, explained that uh, to clearly so just uh, write an email to me to ask and discuss the topics so this is what I want to say before the workshop so Okay, thank you. <laughs> and uh, then we, I can start now. Uh, I can share my screen. I will share my screen first. Mm, this one, uh, no, this one. Have you, have you seen my screen, my slides? This is a correct, correct slides for the workshop. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Everything right. Okay. So I will start. So uh, this, the topic of this workshop is about uh, requirements engineering. And uh, we, the, the, for the first uh, for the first part, uh, we just uh, want to say some very brief introduction about uh, the principles of requirements engineering. This, uh, my name is Zhi uh, Jing, and uh, my lab. The name of my lab is a Key Laboratory of High Confidence Software Technology, uh, Minister of Education at the Peking University, China. So first, I would like to introduce the teams. The team. This is a team from uh, another university, from uh, East China Normal University. Uh, Professor Xiao Hong Xiao Hong Chen uh, will give uh, some lectures also, and uh, her students uh, Xiao San Liu, uh, Meng Yao Zhao, and Han Han Bian will uh, will help uh, will help uh, all the participants uh, to. Uh, operator uh, on the system on the online tools to operate uh, the online tools so this they are teach assistants so this is the team and uh, then i would like to uh, give you a very uh, give give you the agenda of the workshop uh, the first uh, part is a brief introduction is a uh, just uh, this one I am delivering. And the second part uh, for today is requirements modeling basics. That will be uh, uh, delivered by uh, Xiao Hongchen, Professor Xiao Hongchen. And the third part and the fourth part were delivered tomorrow. Uh, they are, the topics are 
about uh, uh, frame, a problem frames approach. And uh, the fifth and the sixth part uh, is about environment uh, uh, ontology and the requirements and elicitation and also the adapted adaptivity adaptivity dependability and the other non-functional requirements and uh, the la for the last day we will talk about uh, the time requirement pattern and uh, verification and also uh, a, a perspective uh, uh, talk about uh, the requirements for smart spaces that's that is the agenda for this workshop so you can uh, hear those of things so I will start my uh, lecture uh, for my uh, lecture my lecture contains these four parts uh, in, in uh, many uh, three parts uh, the last one is a summary so first uh, why we need uh, the requirements engineering so I'm sure you uh, have um, you you know how to develop a software and uh, we know and also we know developing a software means there is a problem in the real in the real world that needed to be solved for example for the software for uh, for for a software in the smart uh, house and uh, you can oh you can say oh i have lots of uh, devices and lots of uh, sensors how can i coordinate uh, these devices and the sensors and to make my room to make my home more uh, convenient, more smart, uh, yeah, more con convenient, more comfortable. So that that is a problem. Uh, yeah, for for this is a problem for the uh, for the software that, that needed to be solved by software. And uh, we can have uh, not many more many more examples. They need in their situation they need the software to solve the problem. For example, the high uh, speed. Uh, uh, the, the high-speed chain, yeah, currently they have a, a huge software in the high-speed chain. Uh, for example, they can automatically open the door, close the door, uh, drive, driving and uh, sensing and the, the sensing the uh, light and the traffic lights and also other uh, other other things. So the, how to synchronize the train door and the station doors and also how to schedule lots of uh, uh, trains. All, all the problems are, uh, yeah, are solved by software currently. So the software will play a very important role in our smart uh, society, smart world. But, can, but and although in this sense, the tasks of the requirements engineers, the, the main task for them include first to identify the problem. That means we can, we need to sense the problem. We need to have a very, uh, very good eyes to see, oh, there is a problem that the software can be, can solve. And uh, then after you, you you got to, you think there is a problem you need to clearly locate the problem in the real world and then you build a description of the problem and then you need to figure out an abstract high level and also uh, implementation independent solution of the problem then you uh, write it down to produce uh, software specific specification and uh, the the software developers can use the requirement specification uh, to 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 uh, programming uh, to program their software yeah for making the coding and also then the testing something so all the things uh, are the tasks uh, of the of a soft of the requirements engineering, so you can see the requirements engineers, uh, the rule of the, is very important. They take a very important rule in uh, building a software because, uh, well, yeah, they figure out all the sh they figure out the shapes of the software. In fact, so in this sense, we may need to identify and locate uh, the problem and uh, and also. Uh, describe the problem, uh, we need to communicate with many, many peoples. 
for example, uh, you can, you, of, of, first of all, you need to uh, communicate with the stakeholders because the real world, yeah, the, the, the problem of the real world come, for, come from their domain, not your domain. Yeah, for software world, you, you, you are, you, you are, you are major is uh, software engineering, but your problem come from the chain domain and come from the bank domain, not, not your major. So you need to talk to talk with them about the problem. And also you need to talk with the user representatives. And this pe those, those people, uh, th these people will be the user, future user of your product, your software product. You need to talk to them to, to, to find how, what the feeling or how to use the software if you have developed it. And also, uh, yeah, the other project, the sponsor, project manager, and the developer and tester, uh, these are the people you want to communicate with. So there are lots of uh, communication. Yeah, sometimes we, 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 can, we, need, we, we, we usually say uh, uh, soft uh, requirements nearly need to have a very good skill on communication. That, then, then you can become if you have very good uh, skill of communication and uh, have a uh, knowledge about the requirements in nearly so you can become a very good uh, uh, soft requirements uh, analysis and uh, analyst so for the communication there is a picture to show how difficult uh, to communication with the stakeholders the users to find out the problem and we normally say uh, they what they tell you is only a, yeah it's only one eighth of the problem yeah like a, there is an iceberg in on in a very deep sea only part, very few part of the ice uh, above the water that part is what the stakeholder can describe about the problem most of the requirements that are underneath the water that need you need the requirements in to uh to to mine to mine from the deep ocean so that that is a difficult uh how to uh, make a, a how to become a good engine good requirements engineer so you need to you need to know you need to have a very good uh, uh, perspective to find out, to mine out, and to figure out the iceberg, the underneath part of the iceberg. So that is a, that is a picture show the difficult. And also we can have another, another picture to show how it's difficult to communicate with people. Uh, first, first, the customers may explain this is my problem. I want to, to I want to hang on a swan on the uh, under the on the tree, and then we can uh, sit on that and, and relax on there. And this is the customers, probably customers say. And then the project leader listen to the customer, but he 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 may underst understood the problem like this, like the second picture. So you can see there are some difference you, when the when the when the sentence transfer from uh, be transferred from one person to another something are missing or something are uh, added in so that is a problem and then uh, uh, from the project leader to uh, to uh, engineer to requirements engineering they become this kind of, this picture and then uh, to the programmer probably they think out the, the, the just have a, such a feeling about the problem. And then uh, from the business consultant, they may have a picture about the problem in this one. And then we can just uh, uh, very quickly go through. And this project uh, document of the project like this one, and uh, the operation uh, installed, yeah, if you have a very, I mean, prototype installed to the, to the, to, uh, for the for the customer it's just like this one and uh, then the customer 
uh, the cost of the customer is like a very build a very fancy uh, bridge, and also uh, yeah, what what the software can support, and uh, this one is what the customer really need. They really need this one. So that this is. A, so this is the difficulties of uh, communicate with people and uh, describe what what you what you want and what what you understand and uh, yeah the, it's very difficult. So this is the uh, uh, difficulties of the requirements engineer engineers may face may face. How, okay, uh, let's move to another uh, another. Another uh, aspect of the requirements engineering. The first part means requirements engineering is is a difficult task. And uh, yeah, it's a difficult. It's very difficult. And the next uh, uh, aspect, what will let you know, I will let you know how Im important it is. Let's uh, look at uh, the data. Uh, this uh, the the Swedish group is a company. They 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 do the every year they do the survey about uh, the, the IT project. So this is a survey. This is this uh, this slide show the survey they did in 1994. Uh, in this report, it says in the U.S. they spend more than. Uh, Two hundred fifty billion dollar each year on IT project. Uh, yeah, they uh, about uh, about uh, seventeen five thousand project. Yeah, for yeah, this the cost is, and the uh, average cost of the development for a large company is um, <laughs> two hundred thirty two million. For, and for media, so they said not, not slumbers. So that means uh, the government may pay, they may uh, cost a lot of money on IT project. But how the how the effect effectiveness of the of the money of the project, as we can see, uh, also in this report, uh, it says a staggering thirty one percent of the project. Will be cancelled before they ever get complete. So 31 cancelled. And the further results indicate 42.7% of the project were, were over cost, were over cost, will cost 189% of their original estimate, estimates. Uh, and uh, also, there is another number: the American companies and the government agencies will spend uh, eighty-one billion dollar for cancel for cancel the project, software project. And also, the same organization will pay an additional uh, fifty-nine billion dollars for software project that will be completely but exceed their their original time estimates. So that is a uh, that is uh, yeah, the figure to show how important. Uh, uh, this is uh, just a figure, and then we can see later to show how important uh, the requirements engineering uh, in such kind of uh, software project. So the root causes of project uh, success and the failure also in the in Standish Group. Uh, uh, survey report. So it says three most common sites the facts that cause project to be cancelled, to be challenged, cancelled or exceed uh, their original estimates. The three main uh, three main reasons are the lack of uh, user input. It's, you have not. Uh, Enough number of uh, user representative or uh, to be engaged in your software uh, in your requirements engineering process. So this is uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, factors for the for the failure. 
The second is incomplete uh, requirements and the specification. Yeah, your twelve percent of project have such kind of a problem. And also changing requirements and the specification. Also, twelve percent of project have a problem because uh, because this kind of problem, they, they their project uh, their projects uh, is failure. And let's see how how about of the sex, successful uh, project. Also, they show three most important uh, successful factor. Factors, they are user involvement, uh, sixty percent, and uh, executive management uh, support. So this management is uh, uh, about uh, include uh, requirements management, also uh, software pro uh, uh, implementation management. Also, it's very really, you need to have a very uh, good good management for the whole project. And the third one is a clear statement of requirements. So you can see for the, for the success, you need to do good requirements engineering. For the failure, that because you haven't done very good, very good in requirements engineering. So that you can see the requirements engineering is very important. And also, they yeah, I, I have I have mentioned that every uh, three or four years they did uh, the IT project the survey and the publish uh, Charles report every year. And if you have uh, uh, if you interest uh, if you are in interested in this kind of survey, you can go on their web website to look at their reports. And uh, this, uh, this also the 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 this is a report. That is the figures of the numbers of the reports uh, in two thousand fourteen. Yeah, you can see in two thousand fourteen also the main uh, the main uh, problem of the failure project is lack of user import, incomplete requirements and the specifications and the requirements and the specifications, and also. In the uh, sevens, uh, they also has an unrealistic expectation. That means uh, the requirement they have a very high expectation, uh, higher than the capability of the software. Well. So only unrealistic, and also unclear objectives. Yeah, this is also means unclear requirements. So this is the uh, first ten. Top ten, top ten uh, fa challenge, challenge factors for the software project. Yeah, uh, in summary, we say yeah, requirements problem include insufficient uh, uh, user involvement, creeping user requirements, ambiguity, ambiguous requirements, gold plating, overlooked uh, user classes. Yeah, that's uh, that's the main uh, requirements uh, program. So, so yeah, in, we need to get the uh, requirements right. So for 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 a big pro for the software project for the successful success of the software project. But how we uh, we can do that? How we can do this to get uh, the requirements right? This is a sentence from a, a famous person in software engineering. It's Fra, his Fred Brooks. Uh, he said, hardest uh, single part of building a software system is deciding what to build. What to build means what is the requirement. No part of the work so cripples the resulting system if done wrong. So that means Requirements, if if requirements uh, uh, are done wrong, yeah, the result system will very will face very very big challenge. And no, the part no other part is more difficult to recti rectify later. That is also in requirement the more difficult uh, part of the 
uh, software developer. And also other, there are many other persons to say, to say this. this uh, the Kuiper Jones says it, the seeds of major software disasters are usually so within the first three months of uh, commencing the software project. Within the first three months means the process of for the software, for the, for the requirements in engineering. Because uh, when you start a software project, the first three months are for the requirements engineering. So this is uh, also means uh, this, uh, how important to get uh, the requirements right. Also the, and the many, many other people has uh, identified these, these things. And also picture, this picture shows uh, the, the higher cost of requirement error. If you write uh, the requirements, write wrong things in the requirements documentation, how, how uh, the, the, the cost, the, if you want to uh, correct uh, these, these errors, uh, if you uh, correct it in requirements time, it you can cost uh, uh, 0.1 to 0.2 uh, more cost. But if you if you uh, let the project uh, going down to design uh, from design to coding to uh, testing to uh, to maintenance, if you in the maintenance part you you describe the error, it will cost um, to 20, 20 to uh, one, one, 100 to 200 times more than uh, in the requirement time. So you can see how important to make the uh, requirements right. If the arrows uh, has been transferred to the later part of later, uh, uh, later process of the software requirement, the cost will be getting very high. So the conclusion for the for the first uh, part of not first part not the first part of my uh, talk is a conclusion. The requirements are difficult to express, express and, and identify. It is easy to bring in errors in requirements phase, and also the requirements errors are likely to be the most expensive errors to fix. Yeah, this uh, this is a. Uh, uh, conclusion for my first part. So you can just uh, write, uh, this is a take home, uh, take a home message. You can write it down and remember these three uh, points. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, this uh, is a re repository of the uh, research in requirements engineering. Yeah, we have, uh, 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 international uh, conference on requirements engineering uh, since uh, 1993 and we have uh, many uh, journals uh, that can publish uh, the, the, the articles, the papers f uh, on, about the requirements engineering topic like uh, requirements engineering journal, TSE and also T ACM, TOSIM, and also other SE journals. And also, we also have a, a workshop. Uh, yeah, so if uh, uh, you do some research on requirements engineering, and you can uh, take, uh, and you can uh, uh, attention, take, take, pay attention to these uh, uh, venues that can uh, publish your research result. So, Let's move to my second part. What are the requirements? So uh, in the textbook, you can, you probably you may find uh, some definitions. For example, the definition uh, by IEEE standard that says a requirement is a condition or capability needed by a user to solve a problem or achieve an objective. Uh, uh, the, uh, a condition or capability that must be met or, uh, or uh, possess, po uh, possess, sorry, by a system or system component to satisfy a contract standard specification and other formally imposed document. And uh, also 
in this definition is a documented uh, representation of a condition of uh, capability. Yeah, that's uh, say, uh, in, in fact, it says two, says two things. The first one is uh, about requirement uh, is about the problem. And the second one, the requirement is about, is about uh, the contract or specification. It's, uh, it's a two level of requirement in, in, in fact. So the third uh, point means uh, you need to uh, document, document it. So this, uh, uh, for this, uh, yeah, this, yeah, just, I have just mentioned, this is a user view, this, and also this is a developer view. So this, I have just explained. And uh, they have also other definition. Uh, this uh, from a book. Uh, requirements are a specification of what should be implement, implemented. They are descriptions of how they, how the system should uh, behave, uh, of a system property or attribute, and they may be a constraint on the development uh, process of the system. So it's uh, also another. We can find uh, many more definitions uh, about the uh, requirement, but you need. Uh, I think you need to uh, uh, extract uh, the key key point from uh, the key point is the same are the same. So, so from the def in fact from the definition we can we can feel we we have a feeling that the requirements uh, have uh, several aspects. In fact, it it has. Uh, sometimes we can say, oh, we have a, we, we they have a business requirement, the, the system requirements, the user requirements, and the fact, uh, functional requirements, and the requirements from regulation and law, and the non-functional requirements. If you read a book on the, and the read the papers, you can see this kind of, uh, this series of uh, words. And uh, in fact, uh, these uh, dif uh, different kind of uh, requirements have a different meaning. For business requirements, they usually represent high level objective of the organization or customer who requests the system. For, ex uh, for example, uh, for the high speed train, you, the organization or the organization may have a, uh, may have a objective that Pro providing better services. How means better is a safe and fast. So providing safe and fast services. If I, you, you, you can please build a software, help me to providing better services for the railway, for the railway company. So this is a kind of a business requirement. And for the system requirements, describe, usually describe the top level requirements for product that contains multiple uh, things. So for example, for the smart home, the system requirements means uh, uh, you need to, well, I need something, that means a software, I need something to coordinate all the, all the digital sensors and to make the home more comfortable and more convenient, more safety. So this is a system software. That means we ask, uh, ask for some uh, capabilities of uh, to be build a software and to help me to so, uh, figure out uh, uh, the, the problem in the real world. So this is a system requirement. And also we can have a uh, user requirements the user requirements describe a user goal or tasks and uh, the user wants to perform this product. For example, you probably you have already uh, know the, uh, the use cases that, that shows some uh, uh, one aspect of the, of the user requirements. That means a user want to use the, in this situation, you, I want to use a software in this situation, in that situation, in different kind of uh, uh, scenario to, uh, to use the software. This is uh, from a user aspect. And also the functional requirements, yeah, this is very easy to understand. That means uh, what, the software, what uh, kind of uh, functions the software needs to provide. 
So to uh, yeah, and normally the functional requirements, if the you if you implement the functional requirements, you want you 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 can you can uh, uh, satisfy the high level system requirements and also the business requirements. So functional is just a very at the low level and the, the system, what the operational the system can support. And if the, if the system support the uh, operation, the high level uh, requirements can be uh, satisfied. So, and also we, uh, we have uh, some laws and the regulations that need the software needed to uh, that uh, uh, require the, the soft requires the software needed to be uh, uh, to be satisfied. For example, currently uh, we may have uh, uh, like uh, IPAA and uh, uh, R, 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 the P, yeah, and also some uh, uh, privacy uh, 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 pro protesting uh, laws something. Yeah, this uh, this you need to you when you develop a software that can collect a, a person's information, you need to uh, follow the privacy pro, uh, protection uh, laws. So this this is another kind of uh, requirements, and also uh, we you we have non-functional requirements that include the performance and also uh, like a safety, security, and uh, uh, privacy and uh, also other kind of uh, uh, quality attributes. So this, uh, this is the uh, uh, aspects of the requirements. And uh, yeah, this, this is uh, just uh, an example to show uh, what uh, functional requirements look like. For example, for a smart home, uh, we, the higher level non-functional requirements is make the home comfortable and also uh, you can uh, uh, dis describe uh, the uh, no uh, you can uh, you can have uh, sub goals like uh, convenient uh, suitable humid uh, hum hum humidity and uh, suitable temperature or something this is a kind of uh, non functional requirements and uh, uh, yeah the 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 last part of the is a requirement specification and also yeah that is a very you can it's a, we can, we need to, sometimes we need to follow some uh, uh, patterns or some uh, patterns to, to write it down for the requirements uh, specification. And uh, then the, for the last slides for the second part, I want to say about what, what I want to list, give you a list. What are not requirements? In previous slides, we I, we, I talk about uh, what are requirements. So these uh, are what are not requirements. What are not requirements like uh, design, if you include the design details, the doc, the, these are uh, not requirements. And the implementation detail, project planning information, testing information, like all these are not requirements. That these are uh, things uh, uh, in, the, in the later, uh, process of a uh, software developer, software, uh, software development. So these this are not. So these are my first, my second, uh, second uh, part of my talk, second part of my talk. The third part is uh, what we need to do in the requirements engineering in the, in the process. And uh, and uh, we 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 very like uh, these uh, very simple like formulas. It's just like formulas. It tells it tells uh, if we have a set of uh, uh, environment uh, assumptions. We, yeah, we I just say uh, the the problem the the problem is situated in the real world. The real world is the environment of the software. That's uh, the requirement. Uh, environment assumption means uh, you need to describe uh, the, the scenes the software needed to uh, situate it in. You need to uh, 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 interact with. So this is uh, you need to have a, a, a set of assumptions about uh, the environment. And uh, the second 
This is the first. And the second, the, you need to have a stakeholder or user. They have a desire. They, have a, they, they, they want to build a software. They, they have an objective, new ob objective they need to satisfy, need to achieve. So this is a requirement. And uh, for, the, for the requirements engineering, how, what need to do for the requirements engineering is given the requirements assumptions and the given the requirements, you conduct uh, the process of the requirements engineering. And uh, then you decide the capabilities of the software that you want to uh, include. So this is a very, uh, a very general description about uh, the requirements engineering. So uh, this, is a, this is a very general description, but how can we do that? We need to uh, uh, bridge this, uh, the break uh, the, the, the task into uh, subtasks then. Yeah, this is the, uh, sub, this, they are, these are subtasks, subtasks. The requirements engineering uh, contains two stage. The first one is uh, uh, requirements uh, development. Second one is requirements uh, management. But in fact, there is not a way either we need first to do the development and the second, this is not the thing. This is not the case because requirements management need to uh, uh, go through the whole, uh, whole process of the requirement engineering. Because when you write anything down, you need to uh, put them in a managed ma um, manner, a method. So this uh, management need, need to, um, uh, to be uh, through the whole. And for the, for the requirements development, uh, we have uh, four uh, general, uh, usually we have, uh, we say we have four uh, sub, sub, sub tasks. The first is requirement uh, elicitation. The second uh, is uh, requirements modeling and uh, analysis. The second, uh, the third is a requirement specification and the third is requirements validation. So we, uh, we can go uh, in more details about uh, this um, activity. So for the, for the, oh uh, yeah, this is just to uh, ex uh, explain the last slides. So for the elicitation, Elicitation, what is the purpose of the elicitation? Elicitation means uh, to define requirements, development process, define, so this is the first step we, uh, we need to figure out the, 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 the uh, requirements engineering process. And then define, to define the vision and the scope. Yeah, we need to find out the, the business like a business uh, objective and to use a business objective to, uh, we mean the program come from the real world, but which part of the real world we need to focus on, this is a vision of the scope. We need to identify user, uh, yeah, that, is, uh, that is for identify what kind of stakeholders you want to uh, interview and uh, you want to do the survey with them, and uh, then this is identify what, which person you want to come, you need to communicate with. And uh, you need to, uh, also there are lots of, we can, we don't, we don't want, I don't want to go through all the list. But the, 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 the things you need to do is observe the real world, yeah, what people, done in the real world. You need to observe the things, what happened in the real world. And you capture the challenges in the real world and these challenges could be the requirements. So this is a, a important thing you, you, you need to remember. So the second, uh, uh, the second uh, task is the requirements modeling and uh, analysis. And of course, in this, in, this, uh, in, this, in this task, you can use something 
you can use something to help you write down what you have observed. observed. For example, you can write down, uh, you can draw context diagram, you can uh, create a prototype uh, diagram, and uh, you can use uh, the prototype diagram to, to analyze uh, the feasibility of uh, the, the future system. And uh, you can prioritize the uh, pre, uh, yeah, you can uh, you can uh, pre-order the order the requirements to 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 find out which are urgent, which are not urgent, and you can model the requirements. You can create a data uh, uh, dictionary something. So uh, yeah, this this picture shows uh, uh, the principles of this stage. You observe the uh, what happened in the real world. You use like a diagram to write uh, it down, and you uh, analyze the diagram to see the feasibility and, uh, and uh, choose the uh, urgent things. And then you uh, put your uh, model, put your diagram into the real world to see if you have catched everything. So this is the, this is the principles of the, yeah, this uh, key point of the modeling and the analysis. Uh, and then for the specification and the validation. So, uh, yeah, you, for specification it's very easy. You just, uh, uh, just write, uh, write it down uh, uh, what, you can, what you have got uh, in the first uh, two, uh, two tasks and uh, using some template. And uh, uh, yeah, this is the thing. And the, the, for the validation, and the, you, when you get the model, the get the diagram, and you uh, write it down in a kind of uh, specification, uh, specification, and you, if you may use uh, several, se um, you may use uh, many uh, ways, many methods to validate uh, the specification, like uh, ask uh, people to inspect uh, requirements documents, or, or, or design some uh, requirements testing, requirements test case to test the requirements. Or yeah, you, you also can, you need to define some uh, acceptance uh, uh, cri uh, cri criteria. So this is the uh, validation, uh, requirements uh, specification and the validation. And the, yeah, of course, for requirement development process, it's not uh, just one goal. You need uh, probably you may need uh, to fit to go back. Yeah, when you go, you have a first you do the uh, elicitation and you go in go to the uh, modeling and the analysis and the, but you found the, when you analysis the what you have got you 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 think you you miss something and you. Also, or you think you misunderstanding something, you need to go back to a uh, uh, elicitation stage to uh, to re elicitate what the user want. And also, this other uh, goes back uh, 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 situations. So this uh, this is the requirement development process for the requirements uh, management. So that is. Uh, for uh, establish and maintaining an agreement, yeah, just uh, just uh, maintain all the uh, agree, agreed requirements with uh, agreed requirements with the customer, and uh, so for the project, that is uh, write it down, uh, managing all the write down specification, on, and also the more the 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 models. Uh, yeah, there are also um, different kind of uh, uh, managing management activities. Uh, I, I I also don't want to go through the list, but uh, one important thing in the requirements management is uh, update uh, requirements updating uh, managing. Is uh, many many uh, software company has a very strict uh, post, uh, rules for the requirements updating. Yeah, you can see from the challenge list of the software project, 
changing requirement is a big uh, challenge to the software process. So this uh, is a task for the requirements uh, management. And also this is the uh, picture like for the requirement, for example, requirement management contains virgin control, uh, changing control, yes, yeah, that's what I have mentioned. And requirements that are tracking, tracking, this is a uh, means uh, we need to, uh, to make the all the write it down document can be traced to their source. Yeah, if you have, if you need to change something, they can trace back to uh, what, to uh, to all the to all the things we need to uh, all the link link uh, link the related requirements need to change. So this is a checking system. So then, uh, yeah, this is for the this is a this is a I mean changing the management changing is a and the the, the development is a. Many many companies they have a baseline uh, management base baseline requirements and that separate uh, the uh, initiation and the modeling uh, uh, tasks and also the changing process. This is uh, things. Uh, so the benefit. Oh yes, we have uh, get uh, almost the end. Uh, the benefit from a high quality. A uh, requirements process, yeah, we need uh, to, yeah, we just uh, talk about uh, the requirement process. And uh, for uh, we, why we need a high quality process, because they can build uh, many benefits. For example, if you follow a high quality uh, requirements process, you probably uh, can, uh, in, you probably inc may include a uh, uh, fewer uh, requirements defects, you may reduce uh, development uh, rework, fewer unnecessary features, lower enhancement costs, faster development, fewer miscommunications. So these uh, are all the benefits uh, to the, uh, to if you, I mean, to the high quality uh, requirements uh, process. So we have uh, already uh, have just uh, reached the last uh, part for the summary. Yeah, in fact, I have not many summary. It's just a uh, uh, yeah summary. The topics I have uh, I have talked why why we need the requirements engineering. Yeah, what are the requirements? and also the activities in requirements. So that's, uh, that's all for the first part of uh, the workshop. This is only a very brief introduction about the requirements in engineering. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your attention. So, uh, how about the next? We have, uh, we can have, uh, Half an hour rest break, right? Uh, uh, hello, uh, professor. Uh huh. Uh, okay, we can have uh, some question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, today uh, is the, the Friday, uh, so we need to wind up before uh, half an hour. So ah, yeah. You can continue, uh, or uh, you can ask uh, Professor Shang again. To continue. Oh, we can continue. Uh, okay. We end today at one thirty. Okay. Okay. One one thirty. One thirty. We continue. Right. Till one thirty, we continue because today is a Friday and uh, we need. Okay. To we need to. We we, we can. Uh, uh, I mean, close uh, earlier. You yeah. need to close earlier. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. So uh, thirty. Uh, currently is. Uh, in China, it's now uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock, ten minutes in China, and uh, and then we restart in two thirty, right? Mm -hmm. So in uh, in your time is uh, eleven thirty, right? 
uh, you want you want uh, ten to fifteen minutes break? Uh, ten ten minutes. Okay. After ten minutes, ten okay. minutes for break. Okay. 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 Ten minutes for break. So we uh, can start on. Uh, uh, I mean, two twenty. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I just close the share the close share screen. Uh, okay. Okay. And can you see my slides? Yes. Uh, I'm very glad to uh, the requirements. Professor Jin has produced that engineering activities. The modeling is a very activity. This uh, will into modeling. This is uh, our uh, first I uh, 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 the ABC question modeling. Uh, we use the three of uh, model, but uh, function behavior modeling. We'll introduce modern method mm. to start with what is a model. Uh, sorry, whether you have the modeling experience, have you learned United Model UML? Uh, what is a model? This is a, uh, a plan. The others are of the plan. In fact, what is the circuit? And this is appearance of the plan. So what is what is model that find by the actual is a key action creating the unreal it that we own the circuit this appearance we we did all the implant uh, detail this is the model but what does it same thing have different first the different model simple it's about the how you got uh, this and maybe you are uh, cancer agriculture distribution uh, agriculture map maybe you are uh, pay attention List so you have app. So as the mode depends on your means what you 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 want purpose. So uh, it's important. It's important 
correctly. And uh, in, in a, a written box, is that uh, picture is worth 24. This means that you have for the modeling, that it's also a picture, the diagram is very. But what we say about the age of uh, requirement actually is chance to answer. And modeling, if you have model, and you can, you can follow a can this can be used in the and if modeling basis and uh, I, I is why model requirement this is could cover all our requirements so they do for me are you and the as the work modeling modeling those using it which means is as can be used the requirements and the so what if what are the difference though you requirements and and design. First question is need to model require this starts with requirements document. Requirements doc see lots of requirements. Act of the requirement may uh, over one hundred page very difficult for analyst, analyst and what is uh, wrong or oh, it's just like the bunch of requirements to show out spot comment the there's changes I couldn't tell whether anyone a couple of requirements be conflict but I tell it totally as can find all changes and together. Then easier for you to uh, any or any act. That's a reason a okay. model climates. So from See that said that the risk is about the states. So we can see that actually a, requ a requirement truly about a one a one view of so to the second is there any view of the requirement? Had a complete and um, also will be no, as we just said, and view care about this uh, status. So, as uh, this model is uh, in this, your data then will be about there's no complete understanding. Act is a combination and the visual requirements. Using this combination, we more picture of the the system. Requirements models for the visual requirement. We have use case. If you have the UML, you will know those. If you don't, okay, use case. Now remember, use case model, flow diagrams, uh, entity relationships, stage transition diagram, 
much. A log map plus diagrams, pretty diagrams, trans diagrams, or class diagram, activity diagrams. Um, this is model the upper mail the stage transition and uh, these models can these models is can be used for requirements analysis or for design actually some of the models can be used both in analysis and design for example we have see this class diagram if we use in the object oriented programming, we have class diagrams, we have classes, right? Then we have class diagrams. So, but in requirements, we also could use class diagram to model the problem domains or the conceptual representations of the new system. So, a model may be used in, it can be used in requirements analysis. It also can be used in the design phase. So it depends on the timing and the intent of the modeling. And for the design, and you only need to represent how you intend to implement the system. Uh, let's use an example to say, can this model be used in requirements phase or used in design phase? Let's look at this sequence diagram. Okay, for, for this, don't have the uh, knowledge about the, the, this sequence diagram, I'll explain, the, explain it. This is a, 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 an object is called a cashier. That's one cashier that he interact with the system. If he send a message, make new seal, and he also, uh, he also uh, inter items and uh, all, this, uh, all these messages and the system will uh, uh, return messages to the cashier. This is this describe the process. So this model, can you, can you uh, say it is in the requirement phase or in the design phase? Think about it. This is the requirements or design. Okay, maybe you have a, a answer, yeah. This answer will be this sequence diagram is on the requirements phase. Why it is in the requirements phase? In the requirements phase, we only need to remember this system is a black box. So in this in this diagram, we can see the system. The system is only an object. We don't know what's inside. So it's only describing what the system uh, receives and what the system sends. So actually, we don't know what's inside. So this system is a black box. So that's why it's requirement phase. And uh, as to another diagram, this is also a sequence diagram. And we can see there are three objects, the dice game, a dice game, a dice, and a second dice. So what's this? Is this in the requirement phase or design phase? Think it, think it over. Maybe someone said, okay, we can guess it's, it's design, yeah it's the end phase, but well, what's your standard? Why do you think it's uh, in the design phase? Okay. In the design phase, actually the system is a white box. White box, we all know that it's uh, what's inside, it's clear. 
from this sequence diagram, we don't know, we, we, we don't say a system. So we can't find a system. If we can't find a system, okay, maybe this is a system. Uh, in this system, if we have a dice game, we have two dice. So this is the white box. All of them are inside the system. So this is the design phase. Okay, and for all, all these uh, requirements models, we have two case to support. Here I give some example about the UML. The UML may we have start UML, enterprise architecture, rational roles. And for this case two, it is uh, certainly it will be better than ordinary drawing tool. The ordinary drawing tool means the word, the PyPoint. And uh, because of the following reasons, first, the case tool is easy to improve the diagrams. So iteration, because the software processes iteration. The second is uh, for each modeling method, they, they support, they know the rules. And they identify, they could automat automatically uh, identify the uh, syntax errors and inconsistencies that people uh, who review the diagram may, might not see. That's, that's the, that's one of the uh, benefits. And also he can help as uh, a case two can keep the models you use consistent. That's very important, consistent with each other. And with the functional requirements in your software requirement specification. Okay, e, e. sorry. Okay, so to summarize, we have a lot of requirements models and these models are abstractions from all aspects of the system to be built. And uh, all these, these requirements models we have uh, uh, introduced, they can be classified into functionality model, and the behavior model and the data model. So in this lecture, we'll introduce them respectively. So we start with functionality modeling. Functionality modeling, we have a use case model and data flow diagram. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we only give the use case model. Use case model, we first give a, uh, give a um, it's not a definition, but it's, a, you, it's something you, you need to uh, memorize. A use case model equals to a use case diagram plus use case description. A use case description is more important actually. And uh, most uh, of the people who have learned UML always uh, talk, when, when they talk about use case model, he always talk about the use case diagram. It's, uh, it's wrong. Use case model use case diagrams are secondary in the use case model. In fact, use case are the uh, act of writing a text, not a drawing diagrams. So th this is uh, a clear about the misunderstanding. And some people may say, well, what is a use case? Actually, the use case is uh, you can see here, a use case describes how a user uses a system to accomplish a particular goal. And this is as it is a user, right? So this is a user point. That's why it is a very important the use case model because it is a user point of view. And a use case diagram actually only consists uh, what is being described. It's a system. And who 
is using the system, the actors. And what do the actors want to achieve? This is use cases. So this is what use case diagram about. But how do the actors achieve, achieve these use cases? This is a use case description. Let's say what does a use case diagram look like? Uh, first, we can see this is a people. It's, it's kind of an actor. This is called actor. These actors are external to the system. And the second is we can uh, see this uh, rectangle. This rectangle as a system boundary. This is a system boundary. This is the outside of the system and this is the inside of the system. The second is uh, this is uh, the AVO, this is use case. This is the use case. And also we can see these lines. This, this represents the, uh, the actor and the use case relation. This means that this actor will use this, uh, use this, uh, this use case which means we can see that the checking representative will check with use the passenger service to check in. And the passenger will use the passenger service to check in, to express check in, to boarding. That's the meaning of the use case diagram. And as we, we can say, this use case is only just a checking or something, uh, verb plus non phase. Actually, the use case should be a sequence. We'll, we'll talk about it later. And this is uh, another, another use case diagram. And we can see it's about the next generation POS, POS which means the point, point of sale. And th this is inside, this is a system boundary and this is outside, we have actors, customer, uh, cashier, manager, uh, sales activity system, and HR system, accounting system, tax calculator. And these are outside of the system. So they are the actor, this uh, kind of actor, and this is also a kind of actor. These actors are alternative not notations. They are different from this people figure. It's just a, a use a, a keyword actor. And we use keyword actor to uh, express existing system. So it's computer system actor. So from this, we can see there are so many actors and also we have many uh, use cases and these use cases may involve um, uh, at least one actors. So that's, that's the, what the use case diagram could express, but it could express how the actors will interact with the system to achieve these use cases. Okay, let's uh, say th these elements again. Okay, we have actors, right? Actor, actually actors are not, uh, we couldn't say actors is not equal to individual. It is a rule, it is a concept of rule. The rule can be a human or the existing uh, external systems or it can also even be an organization. So actor is not just the people. That's uh, uh, you, what you want to, you need to memorize. The second important concept is use case. Actually the use case are initiated by a user to fulfill a goals describing the activities and the rights involved in attending their goals. So, 
the use case is not just uh, saying check in, it's just how to check in. That's uh, a use case description. The third, the third is a, a relationship. This relationship actually is uh, what we have seen is uh, between the actor and the use case. Actually, the use case also have a relationship with the use case. We'll speak about that later. And the system boundary. The system boundary defines the system interest in relation to the world around it. So it uh, distinguishes what's inside and what's outside. That's very important for you uh, to start developing a safe system. And as we, I just said, the use case ha also have relations uh, here we uh, we uh, we we introduce three uh, use case relationships. That's the relationship between the use cases. For example, this is the use include include, which means that this pro uh, this use case includes the process of this use case. And extend extend actually is a. Uh, uh, Actually, is uh, to uh, uh, to actually accomplish the extension by adding uh, additional action sequences, which means you, you have more other action sequences. And the third is very common in in, in UML, which is this is a is a relation, which is a generalization of which means this is a verifying visitor fingerprint is a, is a kind of verif verified visitor identity. So we, we don't say much more about the use case relationships, but you know there are relationships between these use cases. And what I think what's more important is a use case is a sequence of uh, interactions which means that a use case description, it means how this, this, the, uh, the actors will interact with the system to achieve this use case. This is the example of this play monopoly game. And we, we don't need to uh, very clearly understand this, this uh, example, but I want you to remember that a use case actually is a scenario. This scenario includes many steps. Yeah, many steps. And uh, which means this use case could be achieved by many steps. So at first we say a use case is actually uh, an act of drawing steps, a drawing text. This means this, this means this description. So this is very important. This is dynamically says what, how the users can, will interact with the system. Of course, we have uh, success scenarios and we also have the extensions, which means that uh, there are maybe exceptions. So this is what we mean about use case description. This is very important. I have to say it again. Okay, we have uh, uh, introduced you the use case model, including the use case diagram and the use case uh, description. So how to get a valid use case model? And uh, first of all, this is how to identify the actors because the actor this is a, a, the user view. So you have to know what, whose view, the, the actors. And by identifying these actors, we could find, we could use these questions. For, by answering these questions, we can get the answer. For example, uh, who is notified? Here you can see, uh, also we have a what what which means not a people, but not a people, but it can 
also be an actor. So we get what. But uh, maybe we could say, uh, okay, who is notified when something occur, occurs within the system? Uh, who provides the information or services to the system? Or uh, who helps the system respond to or complete a task? By answering this, this question, you could get actors. And at, after this actor, actually you can identify the use cases. And the exact, uh, exact to do is for each category of the users actually we said the actors is a rule of users a rule so for for each category of user you identify all rules planned by the user relevant to the system and you can identify what the users are required require the system to be performed to achieve these goals and you can also write uh, what uh, what takes interactions are uh, expected uh, from the users and uh, between the users and the system? So and then you structure this use case. This is how you get these use cases. And from the use cases, this has many benefits. I'll I list some of them. And uh, I think this is very important. First, the use cases are very powerful technique because it is a black box function. Uh, it is a black box. It reveals the system as a black box and also it is as a user point of view. The second is a provide a very excellent way for the, for, for the use cases to be uh, understood and it also provides an excellent way for communicating with customers and users because they are writing natural language. And this one is also the use cases. Uh, you, you look back and you may find that for the very complex, large projects. And using this uh, use cases, actually you participate in the problem into major uh, use cases. So it's like that you complete, you decompose the, the, the very big system into a uh, simpler um, sub problem, a sub uh, projects or sub, uh, um, sub systems. So I think that's a very important uh, uh, effect too. The second is uh, actually the use case scenario is repre represented by a sequence diagram. It involves a collaboration of multiple objects. And so it can help identify the messages. Also, it uh, can uh, provide a, a good basis to link uh, the, the, the design, the, the, the the further analysis. So, uh, like the bef after I will I I will talk about the system sequence diagram, which will be use use cases as a good basis as a basis to further analysis because this is only a very big system and a, a simpler sister subsystem. But maybe this subsystem is too still too big. So it needs further uh, decomposition. But use case is a uh, provide a very good basis. That's very important. Okay, now I have uh, explained the use case diagram, use case model. Now we let's start with use case diagram. And I, I give you an exercise uh, about the uh, library information system. I put out the information system, uh, uh, inf information of the information system uh, here. And you can, now you can uh, take out a, a piece of paper and uh, just use a pencil and to try to figure out what's the use case diagram of the library information system. Okay, let, let's wait for you to finish this use case diagram.
And if you have any questions, you can interrupt me uh, right now. Sorry. Maybe I just go back and to see the, oh, sorry, I can't go back because you, you need to see the exercise. It says about the system contains a catalog with books and journals and the library clerk access the system and the library members also access the system. So what's the use case diagram? Maybe I'll give you 10 minutes to finish this. If you have finished, you can tell me. As I to draw here, what uh, is a uh, use case diagram look like? Okay, this is the system boundary and you can just uh, hear what system is, library information system. And this is the actor, right? And this is the name of the actor, and this is use case. And you draw a relation between them. Okay, this is a use, what use case diagram look like.
Okay. Okay, I see it. Okay, you finished. Okay. Let's 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 say it together. As the library information system. Okay. Uh, library information system. Okay. Let's say. Let's first say what actors they are. So it's very easy. We have a library clerks and the library members. And uh, okay, the library clerk access the system to do what? These are the use cases. It's easy. So we got this kind of uh, use cases like this. And the second, I don't know whether anybody tired think about uh, the first sentence. The system contains a catalog, a database with books and journals. Anyone know when knows that? What can we do about the catalog or this database? Can we think this a catalog or database? Can we write it here as an actor? No, the answer is wrong. Why? Because it's easy. We, we said the actors are outside the system, right? But this is about the system include. This, the system include a catalog. So this is inside the system. So that's why this is not an actor. So what we got this, that's correct. And I just say, uh, what you have are uh, written, that's good. Okay, let's uh, go on to the behavior modeling. Behavior modeling, okay, we very well um, introduce three typical behavior models. The first is system sequence diagram. The system sequence diagram and uh, the tra state transition diagram and the dialog map. The system sequence diagram, actually, the system sequence diagram is actually a sequence diagram. So it is called a kind of a sequence diagram. It is in the form of a sequence diagram. But what is a sequence diagram, SSD? Uh, SSD is actually a picture. So it's a picture and so, what for particular scenario of a use case so this is the use use case as a basis and the events that external actors generate and the inter system events and their orders what does that mean so ssd as actually for a scenario a use case scenario so then it uh, includes in the events and the others, right? It is about events and the others, and the events is about uh, the actor and the system. So that's all. And in this sequence diagram, all the systems are treated as a black box. So in requirements, what we need to memorize is you need to know our system, our, the system you want to be, you build, okay, you want to develop, it's a black box. It's a black box. Okay, so the emphasis of the diagram is about the events that cross the system boundary because you need, actually, it uh, uh, records the interaction be between the actors and the system. So to uh, compare the system sequence diagram, SSD, with the sequence diagram, actually SSD is treated the system as a black box, but sequence diagram uh, treated the system as a white box. And uh, by white box, we mean that it has the, it designs the interacting software objects. So that's the difference. That, that's how we distinguish the different uh, diagrams in different uh, phases. It, it is used in requirements, uh, it is used in design. And uh, 
also, we want to, you to understand that use case is as a starting basis. So the SSD is actually generated from the inspection of a use case. And this is actually the use case description. And from this use description, we can uh, draw a, a sequence diagram. It's about the cashier and the system. So this is a SSD system sequence diagram. So we, we defined again. So what is a sequence diagram? I need you to remember this. The sequence diagram models the interactions between objects in a single use case. So it actually shows different parts of the system work in a sequence to get something done. Now we look at what does a sequence di diagram look like and uh, what can it be, uh, what can it describe? Um, first we look at this. This is used as an object. This is object, object, this and for this, this is a lifeline, lifeline. And this is a message. This message is what we have just said, these events. And this, this is the, the activation, activation bar. And this is a message caller, and this is the message receiver. And also, the uh, sequence diagram can describe the asynchronous messages. It can describe like this. And this uh, asynchronous message, the, it, used, it means that the message caller doesn't want to wait for the uh, receiver to process the message and return before sending other messages to other the objects, which means that this is a message then I don't need a, a return. And then I, I go on to send the, the other messages. This is asynchronous message. And uh, also the other kind of message, for example, the, we said it's a return, return message. I send you a message and you give me a response. So that's a, a return message. As the second is a participant creation, creation message. This creation message, this is a creation message, which means that this object is just created. And uh, moreover, this, uh, just the, uh, there are many complex interactions. These ac actions may be alternative re uh, relations, or may maybe they have uh, loops, uh, maybe they have options. So how can we describe that? So a uh, sequence diagram provides a fragment operator. It's here. And this uh, operator, we have different uh, keyword to describe different uh, meaning. This out means alternatives. Of course, we can have uh, different meaning. Mm, we can have loops, we can have options. They, they have different uh, keyword. And for this out, which means their choice, you can, uh, if you have this condition, you, you, you satisfy this condition, then you do this. And you have this, you, you satisfy these conditions, then you do this. So this is what they describe, the, the loops, the alternatives, the options. Uh, okay, so it is easy for, uh, for the sequence diagram. And uh, uh, if you have uh, learned a sequence diagram, so uh, it will be more easier. But you have to, what I mean, uh, for requirements modeling, you have to do this SSD. For SSD, you have to be a sy uh, sequence, uh, an object called system. So that's a reason, that's, uh, that's, uh, important for the requirements modeling. So now we have a, a exercise. This exercise from the um, use case scenario description. 
And this is the, use, uh, the scenario description. And from this description, you can draw a system sequence diagram. And now we can uh, start with this exercise and uh, try to try to find out how to express them. And do you think this is a SSD? Maybe it's, it's easier for who have already learned sequence diagram. But I do think this is not very difficult. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll leave you some minutes for this exercise. You have uh, difficulties? Maybe I, I just uh, too quick. Maybe you haven't uh, learned sequence diagram.
Okay, let, let's say it together. Okay, so this scenario, the first. Yeah, very good. Okay. I see. Uh, some of you have finished. Let's, let's say it together. And this scenario, we can see that first is the customer arrives at the POS, check out with good taste. This is we have we identify this a customer, and uh, this customer arrives at the POS. The POS is a system of check out to check out with goods to purchase. But do you think the customer we should uh, put it here? The customer I have uh, intact with the POS. That's a, that's a problem. If it has intact with the POS, so the customer should be an actor, but the cashier starts a new seal. So actually it's the cashier who interact with the system. So we don't have customer here, we have cashier. And the cashier do what? Starts a new seal. Starts a new seal on what? On the system. Then the then cashier enters item, so it enters item, and the uh, uh, the system records and presents. We don't we don't care about what the system do, but we we care about what the system return to the cashier, right? So the cashier, the, he said, it's the record and the present item, the description, price, and the running total. So this is what the, it, this is uh, the, uh, what he returned, so that we, we put it here. And then the cashier uh, repeats step three to four, which means this is a, a loop here. So we got a loop, right? It's a loop here. Okay, so we can write here loop. And uh, okay, after this loop, actually it's the cashier said, uh, have you finished? If yes, then you, you press a button, then the loop is finished. And then the system presents. The system presents, which means the system uh, return something, I'll show something to the cashier. So we got a message here. And the cashier, and the cashier tells the customer, the cashier tells the customer, this is not so the, uh, it's, this is not so the system. So step six is not included in, in, in this 
a sequence diagram. And uh, ask for the payment. Ask for the payment. If they ask the customer, that's, uh, uh, that's no need to uh, consider that. At the custom pays and system handles the payment. The system handles the payment, that's important. So actually we get this. We get make payment here. The system deals with the payment and the cashier said he make payment, right? So actually we get a SSD like this, the cashier and the system, no customer. And the cashier uh, told the system said we will make a new sale and then they start, uh, start a loop here and he enter item and the, the system dis, uh, returns the description and the total and the cashier sells and the sale and the system uh, uh, returns the total with checks and the cashier sells and make payment. The system can, can, uh, will, will give the change and the, the receipt will calculate the change and uh, that's all. That's what the cashier interact with the system. So this is a requirements model. We don't know what the system do. Maybe we just say that the system records. Oh, we don't, we don't know. From this second time, I don't know what the system do. And we do not care because the system do is what's inside the system. But in this uh, diagram, the system is a black box. We just don't know what's inside. We even know what he received and what he sent. This is a SSD. And you can compare with your answer and try to figure out what's the difference. And if you have any uh, questions, you could uh, you feel free to tell me uh, if you now or uh, after uh, will be okay. Do you have questions? No, maybe we can discuss uh, later. Okay, this is about the system sequence diagram. Okay, I will tell you the second is about the state transition diagram. Uh, the state transition diagram is actually is very important. So I, I put a lot of uh, uh, slides in it. And uh, we start uh, with uh, this, yeah? Uh, someone is asking for customer action uh, on your uh, this, diagram. This diagram? Yeah, uh, in that diagram, uh, someone is asking about the customer action. The uh, customer, okay. Customer. Uh, okay, I'll explain it again. First, the customer, the customer, what is a customer? We look at this scenario again, and this customer interact with who? We, we want to know for the system, we want to know who interacts with the system. And we need to find evidence that does the customer interact with the system? Which means if you go to the supermarket, and you pay for them, uh, pay, you pay for uh, the goods you have uh, buy. Actually, uh, the participant want to know the role of the customer in that diagram, in that SSD diagram. The SD, or uh, S, or this, or this uh, SSD. In in this diagram, what is the role of the customer? No customer. No. Yeah. Because customer didn't, uh, uh, the customer doesn't uh, interact with the system. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, the customer only interact with the cashier, and you get the money, uh, and you you give the money to the cashier, not you to the system. Right. So that's the reason. 
that customer is not in, in, this, in this diagram. It is not an actor. Uh, any other questions? You can, so also, actually, you can also see the chat. Uh, she is uh, satisfied with your answer. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon? Uh, the participant who was asking, she is satisfied with your answer. Uh, she okay, has thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's good. And uh, actually, from this... Uh, this case, I want to say that from, uh, in the real world, if you want to uh, find out the requirements, it's uh, just like the iceberg that Professor Jing has showed. It's, uh, it's and, 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 and it's many disturbing, and you need to uh, distinguish them and try to find out the correct one. Okay, uh, if we don't have uh, uh, other questions, we'll start with the state transition diagram. And I think this is uh, very important because we can see states and state changes everywhere. Like the, the smart home, we have a lot of uh, uh, devices and all these devices, they are in a state um, and uh, when they are uh, the function the, the, functional, the, the function uh, works, the state changes. So state changes, state, uh, state transition diagram is used for that. And this is like what a state transition diagram looks like. It's very easy, it looks like. It's, uh, this is called a state, this is a state, and this is the transition from a state to a state, and this is the trigger. And also, if they have the complex, they have uh, the start, uh, start, uh, start state and the end state, but we don't say that. And this, this diagram is about a light control, actually, it's a, a software. It says from uh, an on state, and when you uh, receive a command turn off, then the light is all then then it will uh, it will in the state off, and if you are off and you get a comment to turn on, then you will be on the on state. So, so to build a, a state transition diagram is very easy because it's like okay we find the states we find the transition okay that that's it. But the software, a software, if in the requirements phase, in the requirements phase, actually the system is a black box. You don't know what's inside. So how do you know the state, the state of the system? So that's a problem. The state with the system. So. In the requirements, actually, we don't model the software. This, this, this are not about software. Actually, we model the devices, the system, the software will uh, interact, will interact with, will control. For example, for a light controller, actually, you need to control the light. So we care about the light state transition. So for a light, we, are, we get the state on, and actually we got a pulse. We get a pulse off, then we go to a state off. This is quite different from turn off, because pulse off is, is this pulse is what the device light can understand. The device can't understand a comment. You can't just say it. The light on, then the light is on. No, 
No, the, the, the light can't understand that. It don't speak Chinese. <laughs> it don't speak English. It doesn't don't speak Chinese. The, it don't speak any language. Actually, what he what it can recognize is the pulse. So actually, this trigger must be a pulse, a pulse off. And uh, similarly, if it is off state, it it can have a pulse on. Then it goes to the state on. So actually, we uh, build a uh, state transition diagram for the devices. And for our requirements, how can we express the requirements? For example, if the, uh, uh, we uh, describe the function of the light controller, we could say, or can we, we use it to uh, turn on a light or turn off a light. So. Um, in requirements, actually, we, we say turn off a light. Actually, we can use these states to express it. How? From this uh, light uh, uh, STD, we can see that actually you turn off a light is to, uh, from the light on state, on state, go to the off state which means the light, the light state goes from on state to the off state, then this is a requirement called turn off the light. So in the requirement space, we actually draw a S state transition diagram for a device. For example, we can do an exercise about the air conditioner controller. And uh, as the air conditioner controller actually is to control the air conditioner, right? We control the air conditioner. Suppose we, we think there are three states of the air conditioner, cool, hot, and stop. And uh, can you draw an STD for the air conditioner? And can you uh, think about it to how to express or uh, lower the temperature? We use the air conditioner to lower the temperature. Now think about it and maybe you draw the STD for it. rectangle to express a state. Okay, and this, sorry, to express the transition and the state. Okay, this is what the SDD look like. Wow, you finished. All right, I couldn't, I couldn't see it clearly, but you finished, okay, let's go. Okay, but I didn't see your uh, graph, your, your, your diagram. Okay, not clear. Okay, some have uh, finished. Yeah. 
temperature. Hot. Okay. Okay, I see it. Right. Let, let's. Uh, Anybody else want to sh show me? Okay, maybe we uh, go on. We go on. Let's say it together. Okay, we, we suppose it's three states. So this is, um, of course, I'm not an expert of air, air conditional. I think, suppose you don't. And the way we can suppose there are three three states that's cool, hot, and stop. So from the initial, we think it's a stop, right? Stop. And in the stop, if you uh, receive the pulse hot, then you uh, will be in the hot state. And if you in the this is stop, and if you receive a pulse cool, then you in the cool state. And in the cool state, uh, of course, then you can have different, uh, you, you, you can, from cool, you can to hot too. And, and we, I, I suppose that's also a pulse called a pulse hot. So this is the transition between these states. Um, and of course, from cool and hot, and you can also go, go back to the stop, right? And now, as to express air conditioning lowers temperature, actually means uh, that so you, 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 you sh the air conditioner must be in a state cool. So uh, you can, uh, from the air conditioner stop to cool, and you can also from hot to cool. So that's my answer. And if you have any different uh, different uh, opinion or uh, question, you can, uh, you can just read, you can just proceed, any question? Okay, now we will, we will go on with uh, something more difficult. They, this these states are very uh, very easy because we know the air conditioner is uh, cool, a uh, hot, or uh, uh, stop, or we know the light is on off. But how to express some complex states? For example, the the healthy state of the people. The healthy state may be measured by many variables. For example, it can be uh, blood pressure, uh, the heart rate, the weight, and other variables. And for uh, these variables, you have uh, a value. And this value may be in the safe range, then you are healthy. If it's out of the range, it is unhealthy. So how to express or formally express a state and not just uh, okay i feel no it's very serious you just can see i feel how can we express a complex state so what is a state the formal definition is like this a state of a software system is a collection of the relationships between variables and Certain allowed values, which means a state is a mapping from the variables to values. For example, this is a state, zero. It has two variables, x and y. And if x equals to five and y equals to eight, this is a state. And further, we swap and x is eight, y is five. This is another state. This means this is still, uh, wait, I can't find my, this is a state, this is a state also, and this is state, state one. 
they are quite different. And even x is the same five five. This is also another different state. So if you uh, define a state, a state is a variable, a group of variables and their values. It's just like you take a picture and every when it's in its position, that's a state. So we will we do a very interesting, a very interesting exercise. I, I don't know whether in Pakistan we have a, such a, such a, such exercise for students. It said no loss solution for crossing the river, which means that we have uh, this uh, story. This story says uh, a man, this is a man, a sheep, a wolf, and vegetables. And when one man takes a sheep, a wolf, and vegetables to go to the other side of the river, the pot is in the left uh, side, but he wants to go to the right side and buy a boat. But this boat is very small. It can only take one person and one object at a time. But when the man is away, I will think that the wolf will eat the sheep, which means that the, uh, the, the, these two can't be together alone without the company of the man. And these two can't be together because the sheep will, will eat the vegetables. So can you uh, give a solution about how to safely uh, cross a river and without uh, uh, losing any sheep or any vegetables? And also this solution can be drawn using a state transition diagram. I just use this exercise to uh, uh, let you think about how to express a very complex state, a very complex system, the state of it, how to define it. That's very interesting. You just try to think about it and you, you can find the solutions and, uh, and the important is how to transform this solution into a state transition diagram. And the most, uh, maybe most of you have already know the solution of how to cross in the river. Now you can write it down and trying to find how to define the state. It's just like taking a picture, which for you, you, you want to uh, cross a river without loose, no loose shape, no loose vegetables. And how can you, how can you uh, uh, design the solution? I'll give you a couple of uh, minutes. Maybe this is uh, difficult. First, you can write solution in natural language. Solution.
Okay, with the solutions, okay. The next uh, question is how to express each state. You have to define a state. Any clues? I'll give a suggestion. You can look at this. How can we describe a state? You can follow these notations and draw your own state transition diagram.
Anyone finished? Chang, uh, we have 30 minutes more for today's uh, session. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, wait, wait, okay. Ten, 10 more minutes? Yeah, 30 more minutes. 30 more minutes, okay. Uh, I will. Yeah, we need to finish. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The prayers. yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, we, we have no wait. And let's just. Uh, started to say uh, together about uh, the, this, uh, this question. First, if we want to express the state. And first, we, we, we do what? We, we have a defined notation. It's for men, we use air, wolf, W, shape, S, vegetables, V. Okay. And for river, we use this. So if we write this, this means, okay, and the vegetables is on the uh, left side of the river. Well, the man and the wolf are right side of the river. So uh, actually each state, we can use this to express a state. Maybe some people, uh, maybe some students may say, why we, uh, uh, what about uh, the man and the, and the wolf uh, in the river on the boat? No, we don't model this kind of uh, state because we, uh, what we care about is uh, what's, uh, who and who is on the left and who and who is on the right. Actually, the mass action are the events, are the triggers on the transition. So we put it here. 
for example, if we want to say the man takes the ship on the, sh on, on, uh, on the boat, we will put S. And uh, the man takes the wolf, we put W. And the man takes the vegetable, we put V. So actually, for, uh, we, we can uh, first take one solution, which is uh, we first take the shape and then the man back, and then we take the vegetable and then we take the ship back and the, the wolf and the man back and the take the ship back. So this is a, a state, a state change. And this state transition, finally, this is all we all on the left side. And this is we are on the right side. And uh, as uh, the uh, solution illustrated, they are two possible solutions. That's one, the man back, but we take the shape, not the vegetable. So there's another choice here. So finally, for the uh, whole S state transition diagram, we actually got, got this. We have uh, uh, two twists, two uh, pass to go to the final state. And uh, more question about this state transition diagram is actually the state may have different notations. You don't need to uh, be naturally use this. You have, you can use, uh, okay, you can uh, make this is, uh, okay, man, uh, uh, a wolf, a sheep, and a vegetable. And you use zero means it's on the left side, and one means on the right side. So we have uh, four bits. This means the man and the sheep is on the left side, and the uh, wolf and the vegetable is on the right side. So we could also use this to express a state, right? So that's a very interesting, but as to this uh, state transition diagram, we have uh, these two passes. That's, that's, uh, that's for sure. No, uh, no matter what kinds of uh, notations you have taken for your states. Okay, this is a state transition. So to summarize, a state transition diagram is actually a powerful notation for demonstrating the changes of system states. And it's uh, useful uh, for specification view or for the test case generations. So it's very important. And, uh, um, and the interesting phenomenon is that the STD, uh, the, the, the system can only exist in one uh, state, in one of uh, many states at uh, any given time. So that, that makes uh, it a very interesting phenomenon. And uh, for the STD, there are also many misunderstandings and we just uh, also say this STD couldn't show the details of processing. So you, you, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, think this, uh, uh, every model or this model could express all the things you want. This is what we have said uh, about the ABC of our uh, requirements modeling. And this is what the state transition diagram can express. It can state the states and the state transition. It can't show the details of the processing system processing. Uh, it can only show uh, the possible state changes. That's the power of a, a state transition diagram. 
And for more, uh, I, I would like to, uh, to uh, pose some more uh, questions. Um, you can think about what is the transition here and when will the transition activity be performed? Is it uh, performed immediately? Uh, or can it be delayed? And uh, should the software perform some communication tasks in each state? And it also, for example, we, we have done a lot of the uh, satellite software development. For example, if the satellite software, uh, it is period, period driven. And it's, for example, uh, two seconds is a period. And you can say, well, we take a photo for some every five seconds. And stage transition only takes when a period is over. And uh, which means that in this, uh, uh, this is, it has stage, uh, stage uh, uh, transitions, but it also care about the time. So what kind of model could you have? I, I've listed here, it's timed automata. You could use a timed automata, which means the stage transition diagram have many variations. It depends on your modeling concerns. What do you cancer? You cancer about the time, you use time automata. You, you, you cancer about the interface, you use interface automata. That's our kind of automata. What we have just talked about is just only a very basic uh, form of the uh, of a state transition. Um, finally, at, uh, at the behavior, behavior uh, modeling, actually I want to show you a dialogue map. A dialogue map, actually it's, uh, it's also a state transition diagram, but it is used to do what? It is used to uh, present the user interface design. And what it means, what is the state in this user interface design? It means that any, the dialogue map, the dialogue elements, which means the interface of the system, any of the elements is changing, then this system is a new state. So actually it uh, uh, shows the navigation links among the different uh, dialogues. And, but it doesn't show the detailed uh, design. So in this, uh, in this sense, the, the dialogue map is still a, a, a requirements model. And, and so when you're doing, when you're doing a, a website, you can use a dialogue map to do the, uh, the navigation links. And actually they, are, um, they use the dialogue elements as a state and the, the navigation, uh, the nav uh, allow the navigation as the transition. Uh, as I, I did just listed it here. And actually the, the trigger action, they have the user action, the data value, system condition, and some combination of this. Uh, I, I won't say more about that. And uh, we can say this is a dialogue map. And from this dialogue map, we can see the, the, that uh, they are like, just like, they are just not like, it is a state transition diagram, but it express the navigation uh, navigation link between different uh, uh, dialogues. Uh, so for the dialogue map, we use uh, uh, particularly uh, suitable for the website navigation links. I just want you to remember that. Okay, the final one is the data modeling. The data modeling Data modeling, so what is a data model? That's uh, very important. What is a data model? We say actually a data model depicts the system data and data relationships. 
which means it uh, uh, this depicts data relation. And uh, uh, of course, we, uh, we didn't say anything about the data flow diagram. In fact, the data flow diagram is not a data model. Well, the reason is that it only has data, but it doesn't have the data relationship. So DFD, data flow diagram, is not a data model. And uh, in, we only have, uh, uh, well, most of the time, we only have one data model it's called EI diagram, entity relationship diagram, uh, short for the ERD. And ERD, it is identified the entities. Uh, usually, it is used in the database design. It identifies the identities in the database and their attributes and explicit relationships among the, between them. And we have the concept entity, attribute, relationship, the cardinality. And uh, as I just said, ERD, the ER diagram is usually used in the um, design of database. In the design of databases for design phase. But uh, actually, ERD can be used in the requirements analysis phase because it can help you understand and communicate the data components of the business uh, system without implying, implying that the product will necessarily include a database, which means no database, but we can use the ERD, EI diagram to. Uh, and uh, to understand the data components of the system, whether you don't have a it or not. And uh, for design, your yeah, diagram is uh, you, you can use it to, to de describe the logical or physical structure. So, ER diagram it can also be used in the requirements analysis. And this is a, a, a schematic diagram for the EI diagram. And this is the entity, the entity, and this is a relationship, the, the data and the data relationship. And also we have the attributes, and attributes is about the entity. And moreover, we have the cardinality, cardinality about the, uh, uh, it includes one to many. We use M to uh, uh, express many, one to many, many to many, which means one request may have many uh, chemical requests. So it is easy to express the EI diagram. And uh, uh, I have an uh, exercise, but I don't think we have enough time to do that. Um, let's say it together, maybe. The first, uh, it is about a course management system. Uh, it says all the students can select their courses using the system. One teacher can teach no more than five courses. And one student can select more than one course. And from these descriptions, we could find, first we, we need to find where they are the identity and they, they have a attribute and uh, their relationship. So there are many nouns and the noun could be uh, entity and could also could be attribute. First, we got students, uh, course, and teacher, course, student, course. So we put all this as entity. So teacher, student, course, and the teacher teach course. So we find their relationship. The students select course and teacher teach course, right? So teacher teach course, student select course. And we find the, uh, the, the, the cardinality, 
uh, one teacher can teach no more than five courses. One teacher, no more than five courses. One to five. And uh, students, one student can select more than one courses. More than one with M. So we have student, one student um, courses. And uh, uh, they don't say anything about the attributes, we can put them on. So this is a uh, puzzle uh, in a uh, EI diagram. So it's easy. And uh, this uh, EI diagram in, in the requirement analysis phase is used to understand the data components of the system, of, uh, of the business. Okay. Uh, Finally, we, 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 we got to the RE methodologies. The RE methodologies, actually, there are many requirements, uh, RE methodologies. And these methodologies, they, they have different view of the, uh, uh, they have different view of the uh, requirements. So they, they focus on how to uh, look, locate and identify the problem and how to derive the implement, implementable functionalities with state-of-the-art techniques. So um, um, modern requirements engineering actually have some uh, um, requirements engineering uh, mess uh, methodology, when well, typical uh, methodologies, they uh, want to make the problem being stated clear and complete. And uh, they want to sure that the solution is correct, reasonable and effect. And these are the uh, typical methodologies in modern RE. They, are, uh, they have different perspective of observing the problem. By uh, example, the goal-oriented approach, actual intention approach, scenario-driven approach, and the problem-free approach. And each methodology have a special metaphor for locating and identifying the problem. For the goal-oriented approach, it thinks the two-bit system is for fulfilling our real-world goals that stakeholders want to achieve. So goal-oriented actually is uh, about the goals. And the actual intention uh, approach is assuming that to be system is for uh, improving the dependencies among intentional actors, which means that uh, they, it thinks the requirements is lie in the intentional actors, the dependency among intentional actors. And the scenario during approach is that uh, uh, he thinks that a 2 system is for enhancing as it is music experience. And the last one is a problem frame approach, which, uh, is, uh, uh, which will be introduced uh, in our next uh, lecture. The problem frame is uh, introduced by my uh, uh, professor Michael Jackson in 2001. And it is used for structuring a problem description and uh, analysis. And in this uh, approach, he thinks the 2B system is for establishing the relationships among phenomena, phenomena of reality that are really expected. And this is a, a problem diagram that he used in its, in its uh, approach. And in this approach, actually, the environment entities and some of them are dynamic, dynamic, dynamics are explicitly identified and represented. So uh, to summarize, actually today about the requirements modeling basics, we, we just uh, uh, introduced some of the requirements models and uh, um, distinguish their use in requirements phase and the 
from the uh, design phase and uh, try try to make uh, every uh, everybody understand that requirements in requirements phase the system is a black box and we have different aspects of our requirements we can uh, describe it uh, or we model it from the functionality aspect we can uh, have the behavior aspect we have the data aspect and uh, all these uh, models are actually related uh, related and uh, you need to uh, you need a different aspects of modeling to see the whole system so and uh, in the in the next uh, uh, in the next lecture we will focus on the problem frame the approach and uh, I would like to uh, make some uh, re reminders for the next lecture. And the topic next uh, uh, lecture is about the problem frame approach. And to support this uh, approach, actually we have developed many tools, uh, what we call the case tool. And this case tool is on uh, this, uh, this website. And we, uh, the next lecture, we'll introduce these two uh, tools. It's about uh, description and the projection. Actually, most uh, the following of the next, the, the, the following three lectures, uh, 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 many of the tools are from this homepage. And uh, I, I suppose you can, uh, Uh, directly uh, feedback to me and I would like to show you the uh, show you our 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 website uh, I'll just uh, stop this and uh, show you show you our uh, our website Can see this website is RE for CPS, and in this website, it's RE for CPS dot org, and you can uh, you can see that we uh, actually we uh, developed by uh, many. Uh, we have a team here, and uh, we have lots of tools. And uh, it's for the description. The description, actually, we have a text and a diagram. We have a progression, pro pro projection, and the timing requirement modeling and the verification tool and the security privacy analysis tools and the consistency verification tool. We have many tools. And also, if you don't know how to, to start this, we have examples here. And you can, and we have a lot of demos here, and you can follow these demos and uh, start to use it. And we also provide a download of existing, of a existing project. And also, if you are interested, actually we have a lot of uh, paper, uh, papers published, uh, books published and you can find them in the uh, documentation. And uh, um, and uh, tomorrow we will talk about uh, these two, two tools. It's about uh, the problem projection and the diagram-based problem uh, description. Uh, okay, that's... Uh, that's I, what I want to say. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you, uh, thank you Sean. Yeah.
for a wonderful uh, lecture delivered by you today. We learn a lot, and hopefully uh, the participant also learn new things. So uh, we will continue uh, our workshop from day two tomorrow morning uh, at ten ten o'clock sharp at ten a.m. Ten o'clock. So ten o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One o'clock in uh, China. One o'clock in China. Uh, in China, you okay. have uh, uh, two. One hour. Okay, PM. Yeah. One PM. Yeah. Okay. No. One PM. Yeah. In, in Pakistan, we have at ten AM. Okay. Ten AM in Pakistan. One yeah. PM. In um, China. In China. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I request all the participant uh, to join tomorrow um, at least 15 minutes earlier so that uh, we, we will start uh, at sharp 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Zijin. Thank you, Shong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. Hina, for coordinating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. Okay.